So you you mentioned Mike last week you were getting rolling on some new stuff. Is that is that working for you or is there anything we can do to help you out? Well, no, I I don't think so. You guys have um I think done everything that we need at this point. Um I've I've been going through there are a lot of um there are a lot of new custom fields since we first started. Yeah. Um so I've just been I have them all in my system right now and okay. just playing around with which ones I um want to keep in there and which ones maybe um you know I because uh, I have a ton of custom fields myself so it's like when the list is yeah. open I think um somebody had mentioned last time a um an ability or maybe it was me kind of uh piecing some thoughts together and the ability to send out a um uh, an email back well I guess the thought process is if somebody um likes a property I'm wondering if there's a way to use I think there's the last town or community visited field something like that possibly yeah and so I'm wondering if there's a way to kind of create a dynamic field that would or dynamic link that would use that field as part of a workflow to send out saying you know here's uh, a list of all the properties in any town yeah you know um just to engage them um but I don't, I don't know if that's uh a link that IDX Broker has the ability to create or not. Can I let I I just while you said that I had an a vision of how that looks. So let me let me tell Maida and Carlos real quick. There are a couple of our developers that are here on the meeting. What what Mike's asking about, I think, and and Maida, maybe you could make this or help me remember to make it, but we can make a saved link inside of IDX Broker that doesn't have too many values in it. And then they can add um, the city code at the end of it, kind of like our that um, we have an, an an app that does it on the detail on the results pages where they I, I think where you can add some values to the URL. Carlos is laughing because he's like, ah, oh, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. But we can actually what we may need to do is add the city code of the last viewed property into the custom fields which mike says he already has more than enough of but it says for example it says miami so it says something like this idx add-ons last city visited or let's let me back up idx add-ons last viewed property city and then the next custom value custom field says idx add-ons last viewed city code so we get that city code, and now what you do is you put in a link, Mike, that says something like this, um, mywebsite.com forward slash I forward slash this link, right? Any saved search. And then at the end, you just add the variable to the end of it. And now it's going to filter it to that city. And you can even add price data to it. So it allows you to create a custom to, you have uh i'm gonna put it here in chat it, it looks like this if you're on our demo account it would look like this let's see let's see it look like this so let's do this assuming you do not have your uh c name set up which you should it, it looks like this something like that. And we can also, we can modify that. So we can create that saved link from via API. And now, you know, I'm sharing all our secret sauce for all our competitors here, but it doesn't matter. And we can put in a low, we can also put in some values in here, like low price equals 300,000 and high price equals 400,000. And, and we can add that onto that link. And now that's limiting it to that. And we can actually put beds, baths on all the, we can actually, with that favorite saved link thing that we've made, we can actually 
add a lot of values to it from a URL. And now you can make your own search that you're sending to that client. And to another client, you would send them the exact same thing where it says favorite saved link, but the city code is now 212121 or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. yeah I think, so we, I think because I think a lot, I think we have a lot of those um, custom or, or the uh, the custom values already, maybe. So I can pop them in because I, I one of my workflows is basically if they haven't been in the system in 14 days, I, I think I look at their last login date, basically. So yeah. if they hit that 14 days, this is something that could re-engage them and say, you know, here's a, you know, up updated list or whatever. Uh, I, I think that's awesome. I think that's awesome. Yeah, we'll work on that. We're gonna Maida's gonna talk about some new custom fields too. So let me let me just start out. I'm gonna show you a couple things if that's okay. Mike, I know I know it's you and Noah. We're probably gonna chop this up into like a hundred little videos like we always do, but let me just show you a couple things. This is a brand new thing that uh I haven't even shared with anybody on our team yet because I'm waiting to do a meeting with a, a client of ours that's actually a really big client. And they have they have a lot of traffic. We've partnered with this company called cordlessmedia.com. And if you go to cordlessmedia.com forward slash realty candy, they've put this in. And you can add to your IDX pages ads. Well, when they offered this to us, I said, no, nah, this that's we're not interested in this. Uh, you know, our clients, we've worked hard to get people to our page. The last thing we want to do is send them off somewhere. Um, but these guys have a system that I thought was pretty compelling, and they're using it in different MLSs across the United States, and they're great people, and I think they have a good package. So they give the agent a rev share off this, or whoever owns the IDX pages. So we they mocked up some examples. So here's a uh, details page. And, you know, it has the property and whatever, and they may throw in an ad that looks like this. And they kind of OD'd on some of these ads just as a proof of concept for us. But they've got, um, you know, like this mortgage calculator that can click out to other mortgage brokers. Well, some of you aren't going to like that because some of you are mortgage brokers, but some of these links, and you can determine what, what kind of ads you want to run in here. But some of them are things like cable TV service in this area. And when somebody clicks on those, some of the payouts on these things, you know, they're they're pretty high. And so if you have people just kind of filtering around your, your site and you have a pretty high traffic site, you know, U.S. Bank here with a little mortgage ad. Uh, and then they have it down here in the bottom of the page. They have a uh, a mortgage calculator and it, and it ties into some of their mortgage vendors. And so, you know, we think that's a that's a cool tool. We even used our uh, Plunk Home Valuation uh, tool. So, you know, we send somebody, somebody's asking about a property detail, a, a property page. They put in this 1200 Callahan. We show them some data about it. And then down here, here's some ads. Get your credit score, mortgage, pre-approval, check with, a, you know, an agent. I don't know. We may not, that might not work for us to get a real estate agent in there, but that's the idea. We, and they'll modify any of these ads for whatever we want to do. Uh, here's another one that was kind of interesting. This Olivia and Mel, and I, I don't know if I can really zoom in on this stuff very well, but in the search results, for example, here, this is, you know, a home in this area for 1.3 million. This is a home for 777,000. And in here, they're, they're able to put in an ad that, that looks, you know, kind of like a house and maybe they're a little too frequent on this page, but that's the idea is that you can add ads. There's the mortgage uh, calculator. Um, you know, here's a mortgage calculator on a details page. And, you know, then, you know, also the purple mattress ad that's there, you know, again, we're kind of ODing on these a little bit. And here's the bottom of that page with a little purple mattress uh, ad on it too. So, this is just a brand new thing that we've talked to these folks about. They've hooked us up. We're looking for some people that, that are interested in trying this out. And if that's something that you think might be helpful for your business, um, you know, we'd love to talk to you. We we actually, kind of full disclosure, the way the, I can't remember exactly the math, but uh, 
the agent, the owner of the IDX account gets a, a share of it. And I told them we work with a bunch of marketing agencies. They said, well, we can split this up so that the marketing agency gets a piece of it. Realty Candy gets a little piece of it. So the idea is if somebody buys like a $10 ad, um, or somebody clicks on like an ad, there's a payout of 10 bucks. This company gets a little piece of it, this uh, cordless media. And I don't know, I don't remember everybody's share, but the agent gets the bulk of it. The owner of the IDX gets the bulk of it. The agency, the marketing agency might get a little piece, like maybe 10% or something like that. Realty Candy gets something like 5% or something. These guys get whatever they get, five or 10 or 20%. I don't even remember the math, but um if that's something you're interested in, let us know. Um, I'm going to turn some time over to Maida. She's She's got some stuff that she's going to share with us. And Carlos is going to share uh, some things that he's been working on. And then we'll do some Q&A here at the end. Maida? Hello, and thank you. I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so I'm going to talk about two... Well, about updates in IDX Broker and Right Home Finder. But right now I'm going to show you the updates related to IDX Broker. And this is just a reminder that this is in idxsalons.com. So we have a new update in the Lead Connector dashboard. And well, the first one is that now you can see the anonymous activity. There's going to be a new tab at the top that is going to show uh, the anonymous activity on the IDX pages. For now, it's only available for the main uh, broker uh, dashboard. This is not available in the agent uh, dashboard for the office accounts. And the idea, I don't know if you can see here, but uh, it's showing the properties that the anonymous leads are viewing or the searches that they are doing. Uh, here I have another example. And this is going to be tracked using the IP, IP address of the person. So it doesn't matter if they change browsers or open an incognito window, you will know that it's the same person. And we are adding here a visitor and a number. So you know that it's the same person. So that this can be convenient in case you see that uh, people is doing a certain search uh, in one city or they have looked at certain properties. And you can promote uh, more of those cities. The second update is related to the contact forms that are added on the IDX details pages. Um, there's a setting inside IDX broker where you can select if you want to show a contact form, a request more information, or a schedule a showing form. And you can change it uh, on this page from IDX broker in the global preferences and on the details tab. And what we have done is that right now, uh, whenever a lead enters the information, it's going to send the data to high level. It's going to create a new contact because in, in our previous version, we weren't doing this and we know that this is uh, really important. So this is, for example, how the details page would look with the contact form. So when they fill the contact information, uh, this is going, well, this is the message or the success mes message that appears below. And after that, in IDX Broker, it's going to show that a new lead uh, was created, but it's important uh, to let you know that they have this status, that is the no account status. This is important because we have uh, their information but we are not, uh, they don't have like an active IDX account. So in case they want to save a property or a search, they need to sign up in an IDX. Well, they need to sign up uh, in IDX group. Well, the update in the high level dashboard is that right now uh, it's going to start depending on the form that you selected, the contact request more info 
or schedule as showing, it's going to show a card uh, like this one. And this is the example of this lid. Uh, it's going to appear, well, it's going to have a label uh, saying what kind of form they are using. And we are trying to put here like a little um, section or paragraph of the message that they sent. But in case you want to see the full message uh, inside the dashboard, you can click here on the lead name. And then you would need to click on the IDX notes uh, section or tab. And here it's going to show like the complete uh, message. This is inside IDX worker and the um, lead connector dashboard. But um, in high level, we're going to create a new contact for this lead, and we are going to add the information that they entered uh, as a note. So this is the example of the same lead. We have here uh, the information, and we are going to see here in the note the message that they are um, that they submitted, and the details of the property where they entered the or requested or send the the contact form. And well, this was this example was with the contact form. But what happens with the schedule a showing form? They look uh, more or less like this. So in this case, they can uh, select a preferred date and time. And it's going to show something like this also um, in the dashboard. But uh, we have also added new custom fields for this. So you can see um, the last schedule showing the address, city, state, zip code, price, bets, and bats. And you're also going to see the message um, and the property de details and the preferred date and time in the notes section. And this is important because with this, you can trigger automations. We currently don't have um, examples of workflows, but we want just uh, to give you some ideas of what you could do, particularly with these uh, custom fields, or maybe you can like parse um, the information from the notes section in case like you would like to trigger or send a message uh, to this list. So what do you need to do to use this new feature? First, you need to go to the IDX to lead connector app and update the custom fields. They are going to, to appear in, uh, in red in case you don't have them on your high level sub account. So you only need to click here on update and we're going to create the missing custom fields uh, in your account. And once they are created, they are going to, uh, well, these green check marks are going to appear. And finally, you would need or to check if you have the updated version of the webhook. This is needed because right now with the webhook, we are tracking the anonymous activity and these uh, actions for the contact, request more information and schedule a showing forms. And that's it for IDX Broker. I don't know if you have any comments or questions. And I also want to uh, make a comment because this is still, we are still doing tests. It might be possible uh, that there are some cases that we haven't covered, but if you have, uh, if you find a bug or something, you can let us know and we're going to take a look as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Maida. That's awesome. Thank you for all your work. I, I just have one question, just so, just so that I have this clear. For yes. the anon anonymous stuff, like how does that benefit real users? Have that anonymous um, like activity? Um, well, they can see here the links. They can see the most people. Well, we don't have for now, we don't provide stats, but they are going to be be able to see the most viewed properties that different people are looking at. And they can also see the searches. 
So for example, maybe I have seen here, um, I don't know, that people is looking for properties between 2,000 and, well, between a price range or in a specific city or with specific like uh, features. Maybe they are looking for two bedrooms in Miami or I don't know. I mean, I know they, they cannot get the information from the lead, but this can help like maybe to promote a specific like cities or subdivisions or maybe um, specific like properties. Yeah, or specific features, like you said. Mm -hmm. Another benefit of it, Maida, is that as, as an IDX broker account owner, if I see that I've got a thousand people on Anonymous and I only got one sign up, that means I have a problem. Right. I've got people that are looking at stuff, but they're not signing up. That's important to know. Otherwise, if they just see the sign up thing, they can go look at our lead dashboard and say, oh, this is garbage because I only got one lead that signed up in the last month. But if you go look at your anonymous traffic, you can say, well, yeah, you only got one person to sign up, but you had and we had a 600 people visit your website. So something, you know, something in the way you have stuff set up is you know, not right, or your offer's not good, or you have a terrible picture of yourself or whatever the problem is. But, but it helps them know that they're also getting all this anonymous traffic besides the ones that are showing up in the lead dashboard. I, I don't know. I, I think that's valuable too. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, so I, I love being able to get that lead capture form information because I, I that was one of my questions because just last week a few um, people messaged through the um, through the form, so I got the email through IDX Broker, but it didn't go into um, high level the way it will now, which is great. Um, I was curious though how I, I think I had two questions on that. So the the forms that they select um, when they're setting um, an appoint or requesting an appointment time or or kind of like contact us is that is that a high level form or is that just or or is that a, a one of your forms that's passing that data over into a note? I guess I'm just wondering how that works, and I guess um, it's an IDX broker form. That's a setting an IDX broker. Mike. Okay. And then you guys are sending the data over. Yep. Okay. Is it, is it, if there's an existing contact with the name, probably be like the email actually, like, does it update? Is that an option to update a contact record instead, uh, instead of doing the, the new contact or is that? Uh, oh, you're, I don't think you're supposed to ask that actually, Mike. That's okay. <laughs> I, I have duplicates from other, other sources. So no, I just, I, I'm not sure. I, you know, I'll I'll be honest with you. Uh, you know, Carlos, you may have a little. Yeah, information. Uh, the way it works is that we find or we look for the user via email. If that mm -hmm. exists, it updates, and if it doesn't exist, it's created a new one. That so. makes sense. I think that's how most systems work. So that makes a lot of sense. It's kind of an upsert. Is that what it is, Carlos? Exactly. Uh, let's see the. So, and I guess the the other question I have when when a new contact is created, I think it was like the non-active status. Is that right? It in um, so in my system, I think we we say send to IDX broker or that that tr I can't recall the workflow exactly. Is there a way to or what's the process? Maybe is the question. What's the process for turning them active, or can you turn them active from high level or do you go into IDX broker to do that? That's a great question, Mike. And maybe Carlos can also shed a little information on that or, or Maida. I'm not sure. When I saw that, that was a question that I had also. I think that there might be a way for us to update that via an API call, but I'm, I, I don't know. Maida, the question is, can we... Um, when when it when they add a user and they're not an active IDX broker user, is there a way for us to turn them into an active IDX broker user? I'm not a hundred percent sure. 
I think we would need like no, I mean the system, the IDX worker system creates the new leaf. So we don't have a way like to create it again because using IDX worker API, we can verify the leaf. If, I don't know if that's the question. But as they are using the IDX broker forms. Can you can our clients go log into IDX broker and click a button and turn them into an active user? Or do they have does the lead have to actually change that? Um because I mean we can add leads, so it seems like we would be able to change that. Maybe we need to look at that, Mike. Maybe if you can give us give us a week and we'll we'll investigate that and see where we are. All right. Yeah. Just, yeah. Uh... Yeah, that's a good question. That sorry to with the questions. I, I like to break oh. stuff if you can't tell. So right. um my, the one the one other, I guess this is more of like a feedback question. Um in IDX add-ons, I think there there's a really tempting button that says send or add workflows. And I and I know I'm I'm not hitting it on the money as far as the name, but I think I think there's a IDX workflow button where we can get workflows does that make uh -huh. sense yep um so i'm super tempted to press that button but i'm always afraid of sending things into the system and i wasn't sure if there's a way to um maybe just say like what the workflow is or i guess just to avoid like having a duplicate workflow or um i, I guess I'm, I'm just anxious about adding workflows without really knowing what it'll do so that, that's just more of like a comment, but um, yeah, we probably need to get. We're working on getting some documentation for some of those, and that that's going to help with that because then we can show you what's involved in that. Um, uh, just a, I mean, I don't know if you already know this, Mike, but what we often do is we'll set up another account inside of our uh, high level, pull that workflow over, then look at it, but. It would be helpful for us to document what we're bringing in because sometimes there's stuff you're like, oh, it had that one hidden piece that I didn't even realize was kind of, you know, back over here somewhere. You're talking about in our snapshot, right? That has some workflows in it. Yes. Yeah. 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 We need to we need to document that. We're we're we'll be um, cleaning that up a little bit um, in, in the next few weeks too. But we, there's just that's slower than we wish it was sometimes. Okay, my, that, that, that might be helpful too. So Maida, do you wanna go ahead and, 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 and share with us what you have for, um, for iHome Finder? Yeah, sure. Um, And I'm, I'm, I was just sharing this on chat uh, to Mike, but we have here um, like a very short summary of what uh, each workflow um, each workflow uh, does. This might help or not, but uh, we still need to improve the documentation. Okay, well, now I'm going to talk to you, to you about some icon finder updates. This is more related uh, to the lead connector integration that we are creating. And we have added uh, more custom fields to track the leads activity. Uh, they are mostly related to the last view property, last saved property, last, last saved search, and some stats like the most view listings, most view properties, number of beds, number of bats. So this is like just an overview of the custom fields that we have added. We are going to add more, but the idea is that we can have like the same, the same or more custom fields. So, so you can trigger workflows or send automations. And this is just an example of how it looks. Um, we are we have been doing some tests, and these are the custom fields in action on one of our demo accounts. Uh, the custom fields are going to have the IHF uh, keyword, that means icon finder. And also the activity is going to be added to the notes section. Here's another example showing like more uh, other custom fields. For example, this one with the most view listings, 
or related to the last David search, the price, the bets and bats, and other notes. And to get these custom fields, you would need to go to your IDX apps dashboard and go to the icon finder lead connector app. And there's going to be here an option to create the custom fields. You only need to click on create. And when it has finished, it's going to show here the created uh, status. And we have also added another option in this app where you can uh, disable the notes. If you think that they are overwhelming, you can disable them here. And that's it. That's it for icon finder. Thank I don't you, know. Questions. <laughs> is there is there anything else that you wanted to share? Is it time for Carlos? It's time for Carlos. Okay, let's do it, Carlos. Okay, thank you. Well, I want to show you what, what we have been working for agencies. Uh, we have prepared a new page in idxapps.com slash agency to show or explain what we offer for, for you. We have also created a tutorials how to onboard a new client, how to get an iPhone, an iPhone Finder account, and how to integrate an iPhone Finder. So this is the, the page. And these are the tutorials, how to integrate iPhone Finder and high level for my clients and how to create a high level website with iPhone Finder. We have some frequently asked questions. And if you have more questions, please let us know so we can add them. And the first thing I want to show you is the agency dashboard. This is a, a dashboard for, for you to manage your clients and for us to know who are your clients and take care of them. So you can create an account in going to idx.com slash agency and click on get started. And it will let you create a, an account. And it is for free. You can create your account for free. So let me log in into my, my account to show you um, how it looks. So this is the agency dashboard. A, we we want to make it easy for you to add new new clients. So you need to click on add existing account, and it will require the account name, the iPhone Finder account ID, a domain, and an email. Once you submit your your client, it will be added in this list, and it will have an I premium IDX apps account. They will be able to access to all the, the apps that we have. And in, in this dashboard, you, are, you can also do other extra things for your clients. For example, you can edit the profile account, see the, the info, see uh, how many apps they have created. And this is something new. You can order an IDX Connect. This is a service that we are offering to, to uh, let me go to idxlabs.com slash idx. This is a service to integrate iPhone Finder to your existing website on any platform. So we custom the iPhone Finder components to, to match your brand. We optimize CEO. We integrate for uh, all of, of the CMS or platforms that allows custom HTML, which I think it's most of them. And we offer two plans, the basic, that is setting up the basics of iPhone Finder and the deluxe that we also set up community pages, we customize the navigation menu, and we do a, a or install a, a lot of other things. Here we have also a frequently asked question. In case you have others, please let us know. And for example, let me go to order an ADX Connect. It's going to ask uh, the package that you you want. For example, I'm going I'm going to select the the looks. And here we have a first option, the high level uh, platform. So if you have a a template that you are already offering to your clients and you want to integrate 
I, I find it. This is the right place to order um, an IDX Connect, and we will receive the, the request and we can start working on that. We also require five community names. This can be cities, counties, subdivisions that uh, you might need, and additional comments uh, in case you have some of them. Proceed to proceed to payment, and it would be required for you to, to, to pay in Stripe depending on the package, the package you selected. So let me show you what it looks like when you uh, pay and we will receive the, the, the package, the uh, platform and all the details that you send to us in order to start the IDX Connect. And this is directly on your uh, agency dashboard. So we are working on adding more things to more features to this dashboard. For example, you will be able to create a one-click website. You will be able to create an iPhone Finder itself. And we, if you have any suggestions or, or something else or any idea, uh, it's uh, welcome. And we hope that this helps you to onboard new clients very quickly and help your success. Thank you. If you have okay, anything, let me know. Hey, thank you, Carlos. That's great. One, one of the things I want to mention here is that a lot of these features that we're building on iHome Finder right now, uh, we're going to go back and add some, if they're not already on our IDX, ad, our IDX broker platform for, with IDX add-ons, they're going to be added in um, starting next month. So this month we're, we're building first on iHome Finder so that we can get some of these things um, built out for iHome Finder. And uh, and then then we're gonna go back and, and build those same, a lot of those same apps. This agency dashboard, uh, Carlos is gonna be working on it this month. Here in the next couple of weeks, he's gonna be adding quite a bit of other features to it. And then we're gonna go back and make sure that we have all those same features on the agency dashboard for IDX Broker. So that's kind of what we're doing with that. Thank you, Carlos. Um, well, I guess Mike and Noah, you guys better uh, have a bunch of questions for us because you're our you're our Q and A. Um, I can start off uh, with some questions for you. Um, so, uh, we're working on. And I do apologize; it's been a crazy day, so my hair is all crazy and everything. Um, Mine, it's but, like that too. Mine is exactly like oh, yours. Yeah. Ah, look at that. <laughs> But anyway, uh, that's what happens when you have curly hair. If you don't put anything in it, it just kind of goes all over the place. It is what it is. <laughs> I see you have that issue, James, very much. No, it's a problem. <laughs> I'll, I'll send um, you a DM with some product that you can use that'll help a ton. Perfect. As long as it's an affiliate link, I'll buy it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, so I am working on getting everything together in high level um, for the IDX broker. And essentially what I want to do to be able to offer to the real estate agents, um, like I, I know we've talked a little bit before, I've got like 170 of them um, that already work with us for SEO and they're really interested in also adding this uh, service as well um, with us. So <clears throat> first thing, I just want to make sure we have everything and uh, that I have everything together. Um, first thing is like the modern website template there where it will have the uh, MLS feature. So that way, when somebody's on the website, instead of jumping off the agent's website and going to Zillow, they will be searching the MLS of the area for that agent. And is that available in the IDX broker? Or is that only available in iHomeFinder right now? So on, on the IDX broker, you can search either one. I don't know, Maida, if you wouldn't mind throwing an example of a high level account that's using IDX broker in here in the chat, we can just pull it up and take a look at it, but they, they can search with, um, with IDX broker from a nice modern, uh, site using high level. So you build your site in high level and we hook the IDX up to it. And then the, all the IDX stuff, looks like your high level website it's all branded the same way so okay. yeah let me let me i'll just uh i mean I, I i know we have some this is this is probably uh 
this is a demo account, but it, I think it, and I don't even know if the IDX is hooked up correctly to it. So maybe I shouldn't have shared that. Let me, let me click on it on my computer and see what it looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Fairly close, but yeah. So let me just, let me just share it real quick. I'll share it. And then we'll get, I know you have more questions, but I'll just share like an example. Yeah, so this is the home page. This is, you know, Cancun or whatever we set in here. But then when we hit search, you know, it's still bringing the maps. I'm still, it's bringing the top nav bar over. And when you click on these properties, this is a demo account and you can change these layouts too, but this, it brings the header and the footer um, from this page. Okay. So, and I might, I might throw another example in there of something that she thinks is more attractive. Okay. And that will do the whole MLS of the area, not just what the agent has currently. Correct. Correct. So it, a good example of that is when you have an agent in, in Houston, if they are kicking butt, they've got like 10 listings today and they're, they're like a power producing agent. They got 10 listings, but when they do searches, I don't even know the number, but they're probably searching against like 8,000 or 20,000 properties or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um, all right. So the next piece that I want to uh, just be sure of is the lead connector app. Um, so you already have all the workflows basically built. I saw that in the uh, IDX broker uh, demo account there. Um, and all we have to do is just hook those up to GHL. Not a big deal. Um, but if they download the IDX app, uh, or not, the, sorry, not the app, the lead connector app, they will also be able to get the real-time notifications right through the app, correct? Well, we, I don't know. Uh, the, our, 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 um, the dashboard that we made is, is an iframe. And I went and checked that. I don't know if it was you or somebody else that asked me about that. I went and checked it on the mobile app and it does not display on the mobile app. Okay. So, so any leads that come in from that are submitting from the IDX side of things or on their website um, will not go to the mobile app? They do go into the mobile app. They go in as a, as a lead, but I don't know. You'll get just whatever notification you would get for any other lead, basically. Okay. Yeah, no, that's fine. I just wanted to make sure that they would get like a notification. So if somebody was on the website um, and submits, you know, hey, I'm looking at this two bedroom, three, you know, uh, yeah. or sorry, three bedroom, two bath house, um, $400,000, whatever it is that the agent could call them directly or have a workflow in place where it automatically sends an email like, hey, thanks for checking out this property. You know, give me a call or something like that. Um, okay, so perfect. Um, the answer to that is it shouldn't matter whether they're using the mobile app or not in that case. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. I, I think the mobile app's a huge, um, just, just from talks with some people, uh, with some real estate agents, because they want to be able to get those get those notifications because not always they don't always get it um in into their email or anything like that so um the next part is the crm integration i noticed you guys had a follow-up boss uh integration is that available for agencies to be able to use as well um in their agent sub accounts um so we don't have anything that ties high level with follow-up boss so right. if they, so you like if you sign up Becky Smith, who's your agent in Houston, you can use the follow up boss thing for her and hook her stuff into follow up boss and you can run it at the same time as you're running our high level integration. So it would actually load the data into high level and follow up boss. But we don't we don't we don't connect follow up boss and high level in any way. Okay, so if they had follow-up boss, they could do that, but you're just using just the the regular CRM that high level offers. Correct. Okay, uh, let me fix that real quick. No, I just, just want to be sure. Just to uh, budge in on that for a second. So I, I, um, I, I feel like we've built, I think you can build like a lot of the workflows to replace follow-up boss when you're ready to wean them off. If you ever wanted to call, um, like I, I have some pretty good call and I'm not trying to sell this stuff. I'm actually trying to protect it, but I have some pretty good call follow-up plans because I think the main value that follow-up boss has is that people are harder to lose in the cracks, but um, I think that you might be able to 
move them over eventually so they don't need they can save the money and stuff from that too and, so, and, and I, I would also mention with that with what mike said is that we find that a lot of people are using high level as a substitute for for follow-up boss okay yeah i figured something like that i just saw that on the site so it kind of got me curious a couple agents are using uh follow-up boss that work with us so uh, i was interested in that um but um Trying to, I had another thought there and it completely disappeared. So there's that. Um, okay, so single property websites as well. Um, are those available for IDX broker yet for the high level sub accounts? Yes, sir. Okay, so it's just iframing those in. All right, perfect. Um, and then IDX feed management, um, that's where we can either, we can pay your team to set that up or we can just, I frame it in and uh, and get the API all hooked up and everything, and, and it should be good to go. Well, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Hooking up that little dashboard that Mida was showing, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, so the dashboard says you have the, this many leads, here's all the yeah. listings, um, yeah. I don't, I don't know that we've really figured out how to sell that to people, to be honest with you, Noah, but if you, if you, we'll, we've got some videos that show how to set it up. And if that doesn't work, you and I get on a zoom meeting, I'll show you how to do it. And then you're good to go on that. If that's something that you say, I honestly don't want to ever set that up. I'll just pay you guys to do it. Um, we, we can work out something to do that, but we're, okay. we're, we, we've tried to make it simple enough and, and Mida is going to build it into the agency dashboard where you just like click a button and just sets okay. that whole thing up. Yeah, That's that would be that would be amazing. So the idea behind obviously having the software so it's more of a passive thing where I don't have to deal with it. I got a couple developers on my side that will be doing most of the most of the work. Um but all right, so workflows, you guys already have those. That's good. All right, cool. I think that was pretty much my only question. I just wanted to verify uh, those few things uh cuz I'm I'm putting that together. I got quite a few people interested. Um, and setting it up. We've got a few other features that we're adding to our software. So as you as you know, we do local SEO. Um, we use a company called Local Brand Manager, uh, and they allow you to create a white labeled web hook for like people who want to do their own stuff, look at their own geo grid, stuff like that. So we're going like, to put all that stuff in there for the agents and whatnot. Um, oh, do you have... Uh, I thought I saw something about a chat bot for for the websites as well. Is that a thing or no? So we do have a chat bot. It works really good and it's we think it's killer. We quit offering it once we started using high level. But okay. we still have clients that use it. So if they're not using high level, like we have people that are using WordPress and Wix yeah. and all these other things for their sites. Um I personally, as much as I love ours, I would recommend you use the high level one wherever you can. If it doesn't work for your application, we have that. It's free and it, it kicks butt. It's a great, it's okay. a great. Yep. Cool. So is there anything that I am missing here that would provide more value to um, realtors that you guys offer um, just from what we've talked about? I, th I think you have your bases covered with that. I mean, we have like 75 plus web apps over on IDX add-ons. And so, you know, we can always try to trick you into using another one. But I think that there's some value to starting out with like a minimal viable product where you say, hey, we're going to do these five things for you and and get that to market. And then as you start dealing with your clients and they say, hey, we need open houses. And you're like, oh, we got an app for that. You know, we, we have a, a cool open house integration that, that to some agents, it's a huge deal. Some other people could care less. So, yeah, um, yeah I would start with that. And and um, I'll just put this link in the in the chat. You've I, I've probably already sent it to you and you probably already looked at it. But if you go to that IDX add dot com forward slash GHL, yeah. there's um there's a handful of apps, maybe about 10 apps in there that are kind of optimized for high level. And, and I would, I would just kind of glance at those and see if any of those, you know, would add additional value. But I, I would, to be honest with you, um, when, when you're starting out, Noah, I think if you start out with four or five things and you say, Hey, this is what we're offering you guys. And then that gives you an opportunity to like, Hey, in a month or two, it's like, Hey, guess what? We have this brand new thing. It's the open house thing. 
and you can add that into your offering. And that way you don't get overwhelmed trying to answer questions on 45 web apps to start yeah. out with. Okay, that makes sense. All right, cool. I think that, I think that's Mike, every... what do you? What was your experience with that? With the... Um... Uh, giving an offering of a, a limited a limited offering to start with and then add features as time goes by yeah i mean i'm I'm not at the point where no is that with with clients by any means i i, I think in my pit my limited pitches i think the challenge i've ran into is that because it can do everything i try to explain everything so so i, I try to like i think i think you're right on with with saying all right just drip it out to them because otherwise um, they get overwhelmed. Um, I, one, one, one of the things that I did for a demo, I just created, cause also people are trying to solve specific problems. Um, I guess, you know, even outside of the IDX. So I, I've, um, I create a bunch of videos that they can kind of go in and check out, which it's behind the high level, um, you know, classes basically. So it's password protected, but the, um, then they can go in and say, okay, I need an IVR system or I need, a web page or, or whatever and then you can kind of see where they're clicking and then you know then then follow up with the with the call so i i think it makes sense to just drip out and then you can show that the added features over time um you know sweet cool um okay and then yeah the, the last thing just popped back into my mind which i'm happy about uh so i am going to a real estate conference like they do here in maine they you know, like whatever, all the realtors and stuff together. Yeah. Um, and we're going to be pitching the the software to them. So I was wondering if you have any um, decks that I can take some slides from that are already made um, and integrate it into my pitch deck that I'll be giving them. Um, it's like a five minute thing, but I just want to make sure I've got uh, as much stuff as possible that covers what we're talking about. We don't. Alma, this is another person asking for uh, PowerPoint presentations. So whenever you have opportunity to work on that, that would be fantastic. Okay. When they, so, when, yeah. When's your conference, Noah? Um, so I have to have everything in by this Friday um, to, to get on the stage. Okay. Um, okay. So basically all I really need is just like a screenshot of what it looks like so I can talk about it for a couple of seconds. I don't have the ability to get any screenshots at the moment, obviously, because I, I don't have anything built. Alma, would you be willing to reach out to Noah through our Facebook group and share some of the screenshots or some of the stuff that you have? And and yep. just, and then anything you need, Noah, um, Alma's our uh, marketing expert here. So she can, she can help. If we don't have it, we make it or whatever we need to do. And she's putting together... A deck. I think we just met with somebody yesterday or the day before, whenever it mm -hmm. was. They asked about that, and so she's got that in her work queue. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Actually, I already started it, so I will send you a message, and you can tell me what other things you need, and and we can have it all together in one presentation. Awesome. Thank you. That that I think that covers everything for me. Appreciate it. Hey, right on. Thank you, Mike. Is there anything we need to cover with you then? Now I kind of, I jumped the gun earlier. I appreciate you guys hearing me with the questions. Oh, no, we appreciate, hey, we appreciate awesome. you guys showing up. We're going to, um, next week, we're going to be talking about themes for the iHome Finder single property websites. And um, I'm not sure what else. We, we're gonna, we have some other features that we're working on. We're doing an update to our Plunk app. So we'll probably be uh, talking about that, the home valuation. So I'm going to put that here in my notes. And uh, we've got some other stuff that we're going to be showing you guys. So basically, we're, our pitches for next week is the single property websites and uh, and the Plunk home valuation. And then we're going to be throwing in some, some extra goodies that we're working on right now. So we appreciate you guys joining us today. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you guys. Great work. Awesome. Thank you. Bye. -bye. All right, we'll see you. Be good. See you. Bye-bye.